Okay, hello and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at setting up a remote desktop on an EC2 instance using Windows this time. We use Windows Server. Uh, I'm going to do this two ways. We'll use both RDP, the remote desktop protocol, which is the normal way that you get into a Windows remote desktop, right? And then I'm also going to use Amazon DCV, which is the fancy way. So some of you might remember I recently did a video on creating a fully featured GPU accelerated Ubuntu 22 desktop on an EC2 instance, and we used Amazon DCV for that. Turns out it also supports Windows, so we can install it on a Windows Server instance, which is great because when I don't want to use RDP or I can't use RDP, DCV gives me a really fast, easy way to get into my instance through a web browser because it has support for HTTPS. So I can just get into my instance using Amazon DCV through any web browser on any machine anywhere I happen to be, which is really nice. And my favorite feature, of course, is that this will support 3D applications. So if I decide to upgrade my Windows instance or add a GPU or whatever, Amazon DCV will allow me to use 3D accelerated apps like AutoCAD or SolidWorks or whatever I want through that web browser session or through the DCV client application, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's get started. So first I need to click on Launch Instances. I need to give my instance a name. I like to call my Windows instances Winbox. It just, you know, helps me keep track. Linbox is for Linux machines. Winbox is for Windows machines. Sometimes I'll give a more specific name, but this is just a demo, so Winbox is fine. And then I'll go ahead and choose Windows here, and we will choose Server 2025 Base, which is the default here. That should be fine. Okay, great. I'm going to choose for my instance type, actually, let me think about this for a second. I probably want to go for a T2 or a T3. Uh, let's look at the prices here. So if I go for a T3X large, uh, that's going to be about 24 cents an hour. If I do a T2X large, we're going to have 22 cents an hour. Uh, let's go for the T3. Let's, let's do that. We'll do a T3X large. Uh, this is fine for me. This should be enough. The really important thing for me with Windows Desktop is I tend to open a lot of browser tabs and install Chrome and Firefox and all that. So having a lot of memory is super important to me. CPU load, usually not very high in my remote desktop sessions, but I tend to use a ton of RAM. So I'm going to go for 16 gigs here. As usual, when you're launching an EC2 instance, even if it's a Windows machine, you do need to specify an SSH key. If you don't have one, you can create one right here and then you can come back to this dialog and continue on. Uh, once you've created one. Usually if you create a new key by following this link, it won't show up here in the dropdown right away. You'll actually have to hit this refresh button first. In my case, I'm lucky. I already have a key. I don't need to do any extra work. I'll just pick my existing key. Network settings. I have a preferred subnet in 2A that I like to use for all of my remote desktop sessions. So we'll just go find that. Uh, projects, public subnet, public one, US West 2A. That's the one. We'll choose that. I will assign IPv4 and IPv6 addresses here. Uh, we will use this default security group. And this security group here actually already includes rules for Amazon DCV and, and for RDP. So when I boot this instance up, it should already have all the correct ports opened for me to get in over remote desktop protocol and also through DCV. Advanced network config, you can come in here to add extra network interfaces or additional IP addresses. Uh, I don't need any of that, so we'll skip that. We keep the default general purpose disk type here, GP3, and we'll go ahead and upgrade that to 128 gigabytes. I tend to install stuff like the Anaconda Python tool tools that use a lot of space, so I want extra disk space available to me. And under advanced details, I will assign a power user EC2 profile that you know gives me access to all of my S3 buckets and other resources that I that I use on a regular basis. And then once I've got all that set up, it's pretty easy, I just click Launch Instance. Okay, and then I wait for a minute. So there's two ways from here that we can go back and look at our instance details. If I click up here on Instances, that'll take me back to the Instance list in the EC2 console. If I want to see the details specifically for this instance, this little quick link here, the Instance ID, will actually take me to the overview page for this instance. So let's click on that and you'll see opens up a new tab. And I can close that other tab, I don't need that anymore. Okay, so here's the instance list. You can see we're filtering by the ID of our instance, so it's gonna be the only one that shows up here. Again, if I click on that ID, I can see all the details. You can see it's running. Now, 
There is a trick I need to do the first time I log in. If you've ever logged into a Windows instance over RDP, you'll know that you have to use a password for that. I can't use an SSH key, but I don't know what the password is for this, this machine. It just booted up, right? I have no idea what the password is going to be. Well, it turns out that what happens is the EC2 service derives a password, a login password from that SSH key that I chose when I spun up the instance. So if you look here under the actions and security, get Windows password is the second option in that list. What I'm going to have to do is paste in my SSH key. So I take the SSH key content or I can upload the whole private key file, which hopefully I've saved somewhere local. I then need to upload that and what's going to happen after I paste that in or upload it is that I'll be able to click on this decrypt password button and a new screen will load up showing me what my password is. For obvious reasons, I'm not going to include that in the video. You'll just have to take my word for it that that works. I don't want to give away my key. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll come back once I've figured out that password and plugged it into RDP. Cool. So through the magic of video editing here, I've skipped ahead a couple steps. And now all I need to do is set up remote desktop. So let me open that up. Uh, we're going to need to add a new PC. Let me see if I can squeeze this out of the way so I can see my IP address, which is up here. I'm gonna copy that, yeah, whoops. And then we'll open remote desktop back up. I will add a PC. The name is going to be that IP address for now. And I've already saved an administrator account uh, in my remote desktop profile here on my Mac that actually includes the password that I got from my SSH key on that decrypt password screen that I just showed you. And of course, the default username is going to be administrator. When you log in on a Windows instance, an EC2 Windows instance, the default username is of course administrator. I'll say add. You can see I now have that machine profile showing up here. And what should now happen is if I double click on this, it will let me into this machine using remote desktop. So I'll use RDP to log in the first time. Once we've done that, we can then start doing the other install steps for Amazon DCV. So I'll go ahead and uh, connect and it will ask me, do you want to trust this machine? And I'll say yes. And then we'll flip over to the remote desktop session in just a second here. Cool, and you'll see it's now loading up. So I just need to give it a second. This is the first time that I'm booting in, so it might take a second. And actually, this is my first time using Server 2025. Uh, previously, I was using an older version of uh, Windows Server. I think it was 2022. So this is kind of new for me too. I'm excited to see how it looks and also excited to see whether or not some of the tools I'm used to using are gonna work in here. Uh, I actually don't know if Amazon DCV supports Server 2025 yet. We're gonna find that out in just a second. So one of the first things we need to do is load up Microsoft Edge and go download the DCV client. I'll say start without my data. Uh, okay, you know what, I will. I, I, I'm not gonna bring my data over from other browsers. Uh, I don't want to log into any Google services. I don't want to give them any feedback about how the browser is behaving. I want to keep this up as private as possible. All right, great. So welcome to Microsoft Edge, and then we'll go to Amazon DCV. Uh, and hopefully that will take us over to the DCV downloads page. All right, there it is. Uh, get download DCV. So we'll click on that. That opens up a new tab for amazondcv.com. And what we need here is the server. We can also install the client actually in case we ever want to connect to another server running DCV from our desktop here. But let's start with the server. So we'll go ahead and fetch that. Looks like it was updated this year. So hopefully it will run on um, server 2025. So I'll go ahead and click uh, on the installer there. It's an MSI, so it should be just an install wizard. We'll just follow along. Yes, I agree. Okay, I do want to install all the things. Uh, by default, these USB drivers don't get installed. I don't actually need these. Uh, I could install them. Let's let's just add them. I don't, I don't really need them for my use case. This allows USB forwarding, but uh, we'll install them just in case. Uh, hey, maybe you need them. All right, I will say I am going to have the firewall config and restart service stuff done for me after the install is over. I don't want to do any of that by hand, so I will not check either of those boxes. I click Next. Uh, my session is going to be administrator. There's no other user on the machine. It's just me, so that's what I want. I'll say next, and then finally install. 
Great, and you can see it starts right away. And what it should do is once the install is complete, it will prompt me to go ahead and reboot the machine, which I will then do. So let's see how that goes. Okay, it wants to add an extension to Edge. That's fine, I'll say turn on just in case we want to use that later. Okay, great, and it is now done. So I'll go ahead and click finish. And interestingly enough, it did not prompt me to restart. Uh, that's a little surprising. That is a step I think I should probably do. So even though I wasn't prompted, I'm gonna go ahead and reboot anyway, and we'll come back in a second once the machine has restarted. Okay, so I've given it a few minutes. I've loaded up an incognito Chrome window, and I'm going to actually try to directly connect over DCV and see what happens. You can see I've plugged in the IP address of the machine and the port where DCV runs by default, which is gonna be 8443, 8443. So what I should do is get this connection is not private warning. That's okay, that's just because the certificate is self-signed. So what happens is DCV sets up a self-signed certificate for itself when you install it. All I need to do to go around this warning is just click on advanced and then click on proceed and it'll say, oh, unsafe, but it's, it's actually okay. It's, it's all right to use a self-signed certificate in this scenario. I then plug in my username and my very, very long password. Again, this is the one that came from the SSH key that I used when I created the EC2 instance. Probably a good idea to change that, make it something more manageable later on, but we'll get around to that a little bit later. I click sign in, and what should then happen is I'll be loaded up to the login screen. Uh, it might actually take me right to the desktop. Ah, good, perfect. It took me straight to the desktop. And it's a little bit cramped, you know. Uh, I could make this full screen to make it a little easier to see what's happening, but this is okay for now. And you can see it is functioning. I can use the desktop as normal right through Chrome. If I were to connect over RDP, that would kill this session. Uh, so I can't actually log in to both at the same time. If I log in over RDP, this session goes away. If I'm logged in on RDP and I log in here, then the RDP session will die. So you have to use one or the other, but you can get direct access and just have everything work. And actually in the old days, I used to have some additional steps that I'd go through to explain how to set up the Windows audio drivers, but it looks like they are just working. Oh, and just to demonstrate that disconnect, let's go ahead and connect through the Microsoft Remote Desktop tool here. And I'll go ahead and connect in and we'll see that it kills my DCB session. Awesome, so you can see I'm now in the Remote Desktop session. Everything looks pretty much the same. You can actually see the background uh, formatting has been a little bit messed up because we were previously logged in through DCB at a slightly different screen resolution. But if I switch back, you'll see I've been disconnected from that session. So here we are, you can see I'm actually back on the lock screen because I'm no longer in. I don't have access anymore because the RDP session has taken precedence. But everything is working as intended, and now all I would need to do is install the apps I need to use day to day, and then I have a ready to use fully functional Microsoft remote desktop environment. That's it. See you next time.